would call them things and be not a dodo. Don't, you don't get in the middle of my prayer because you ain't got no belief that God would do it. Don't get in the middle of my prayer. It ain't going to never happen. Well, you, it's between you and your God, you don't know what, what's going to happen. You know what God will do. You, 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 y'all, y'all but, that, but you know, that's all I'm saying. When you got a covenant with him, it's, you walking with him. She wasn't looking for a husband. She told me that right off. That's what made her a candidate. <laughs> she, wasn't, she wasn't looking for me. <laughs> I was looking for somebody. If she was hungry. I could have smelt it. I don't know. You're too hungry. You're too needy. <laughs> she wasn't. No, she wasn't. She wasn't looking. I, I was looking. All you players. I was looking because I was trying to slow the game down. Y'all don't like me. I can be real with her. Trying to slow the game down. Slowing the game down. <laughs> and I said, she's going to beat you up. Beat me up for what? Tell the truth. I was trying to slow the game down. Tell the people. Chasing after me. You ain't nothing. No, I ain't. But when there's a covenant, the devil knows and he make people come at you. Some of y'all are judging yourselves because you say, well, I ain't what, uh, what they say on the Jenny Craig. Forget Jenny Craig. I, I ain't never seen her. Y'all seen her? What she look like? Y'all seen on the Schwarzenegger lately? Who trying to be that? This muscle's done turned to flat. That's all I'm trying to say. Remember last week? Quit trying to be an A, a B, a C, a D, a G, a H, F, I, G, M, N, O, P, a Z. Quit trying to be in the alphabets like everybody else. I said I ain't like everybody else. And if you're trying to be like everybody else, that's your problem. That's your problem. You're trying to be a cookie-cutter Christian, that is your problem. You're trying to fit in. You're trying to find friends that fit in. Let's us fit in. Fit in to what? This madness? Fit in the God's program. Fit in the God's anointing. He said peculiar. What does that, uh, good God, help me, Holy Ghost. What does peculiar look like yeah. on you? Yeah. <laughs> wear it, wear it with a smile. Yeah, wear peculiar. Wear it with a smile. Wear it with style. And they say something different about you. Wear it. Because what they're trying to say, why don't you be like everybody else? Why? Who are you trying to be like? Who is it you want to be like unless it's the God in them? Who? Paul said, imitate the God in me. Not the liar, not the thief, not the flesh, not the murderer. Because ain't no good in none of us. Just see the God in me, you see. So the God in you is what I want to play with, walk with, talk with. Because the despicableness about any of us ain't worth Ain't worth a hill of beans. And, and when I see it, you see it. That's when we say, well, I see it. That ain't something I want to hang with. I ain't going to kill you over it. Pray about it. When you get to that point, I'll see you. 
Because it's in all of us. That's the part of us that has to be crucified. But there's some God in you. Or you wouldn't be here with me and I wouldn't be here with you. But as far as who I'm trying to imitate, I ain't trying to imitate no preacher on TV. I, I sure ain't trying to imitate no athlete. I'm trying to imitate Jesus as best I know. And you know what I find? The more I try to imitate him, the more I hurt. Because I found out Jesus had to pray because there's too many reasons not to. That means I got to care about what's going on in the world. I literally have to care about what's going on in the world. Because being a Christian ain't all about this fake grin, fake smile. That joy that I have comes from the inside. It ain't something plastic on my face. It ain't a Ken or a Barbie doll smile. It's a real joy that comes from the inside. It's on the inside of me. It's on the inside of me. There's a cry down there, but the opposite of that cry, there's a real joy. There's a joy unspeakable. I told y'all the Holy Ghost got jokes. And he took me out one time and started telling me jokes about two or three years ago. I'd come back and told y'all he got jokes. Now, when we going through trials and tribulation, he don't tell me jokes. He just give me joy. I would be a drunk if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost. I would be an alcoholic if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on. Let me talk to some of y'all. Some of y'all is alcoholics because all you need is the Holy Ghost. I would be a drug addict if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost. You know why? Because the motions of what I need as a human being run deep. I would be a whoremonger if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost. Because the emotional need that I need satisfied go deeper than just sex every now and then with one woman. Oh, I'm talking too much truth here. But I'm trying. I ain't just talking to a few of you, you, you yard birds here. I'm talking to yard birds everywhere. Hope I don't hurt your feelings. See, because I know that out there, if not in here, there are a lot of people that are addicted and doing stuff. I would be a gambler if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost because I need the thrill of hearing them bells ring. Because... I'm a human being, and, and, and I got deep, deep emotions that got to be satisfied. So the thrill of one woman on Monday night wouldn't be able to handle it. I got to have a nothing because I need that deep thrill. If I was a woman, one man couldn't satisfy me because I got to have that, that new, fresh thrill. I'm talking for somebody. I'm just trying to tell you, the flesh got to have that satisfaction. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't just drink water. Couldn't just drink Gatorade. I got to have something to stimulate my, because see, you are wired to have a certain part of you stimulated. Why are people experimenting in funny sex? It's because normal sex, they have reached their plateau. Oh, this is why I get in trouble. Just regular old uh, heterosexual stuff don't satisfy them. It ain't dirty enough. They got to find the depravity of, of the flesh. That's all I'm trying to talk to you about. Don't judge me here. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. Because you got to find the, the, the depravity of se uh, flesh. You got to find, go to the lowest denominator of the flesh. Why be a surface sinner? Why be a sinner that all you do is lie sometimes? If you go into hell, why not do it? Go all the way to the depths of it. Understand what sin is. And if sin don't get checked by the power of the Spirit, you will go to the depths of sin. So all I'm trying to tell you, that a person like me and some of you who have tasted the Holy Ghost become prime targets for, I'm talking about who have walked with God, who have seen the presence of Jesus, who have been in his glory. We ain't trying to say we better than you, but what happens, you got to replace that level. You got to have, you got, to, the enemy knows that he had to take you in a chain, in a place, and you may not understand it, 
that we have to preach in a realm, my God, according to the realm of glory that we have been in. That's why we might affect you so deeply because we can't stay on the surface. See, if I backslide, I can't come back because there's a certain place you go. You say, here's great. No, it's impossible for some people who have seen and touched him, he says, that if they should fall back because they have touched his glory in such a place, some of y'all can dib and dab and then and, 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 and come back, but there are people who have walked with him that if they ever fall back, the Bible says they can't come back. And that bothers people. Because that says, so you say in me. So for Paul is telling us that if I done preached, I pray that I don't be a castaway. Moses seen God and couldn't come back. See, y'all want to see God. But y'all want to put him on Facebook and get all the thumbs up about him. But there's an accountability once you have seen him that you become walking around of prophetic power that God holds you accountable that you could, if possible, be stoned for what you got to say. That clock ain't there because I'm playing church here. I'm here to warn you. And I may be the last prophet you see. Time is rounding up. Y'all used to preachers tickling y'all's ears. And some of you can sin on Friday and feel good on Sunday. But there's some of us, if we do, do that, God going to cut us off. Some of y'all don't know no better, but some of us do. Because we done prayed ourselves in a corner. We died with him. Some of y'all ain't dead yet. Y'all still lie. That's why you crying and kicking. And I'm here to tell you and stand on the tomb of the prophets that we at the final hour. <laughs> and I can take the ridicule. That's all I'm here for. And I'm not your thumbs up, buddy. <laughs> and I ain't trying to be arrogant. <laughs> And, I, I, and that's what some people see a clock, see one through 12. Yeah. Some see revelation yeah, 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 yeah. that you are in time yeah. and the show about to be over. Yeah. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But God so loved you that he gave you somebody and somebody's. That's willing to keep you focused while you worrying about your chicken. <laughs> and how many mashed potatoes you going to eat. And if that sounds like self-promotion, then Lord forgive me. But until you die, and there's many out there who died and know what I'm talking about. And have tasted this spiritual death. All you can do is feel like you'll never know who Jesus really is till you die. My wife don't know me. <laughs> So don't feel bad. <laughs> you don't know me. Your children shouldn't know you. Because you're changing. <laughs> Peter left all. And a whole lot of Christians ain't. 
They don't, they don't know. See, it sounds like self I ain't doing it. I'm just trying to tell you about the real walk, Amen. pastors. Can you leave all? And everybody ain't left all. A whole lot of folks still at the house because somebody wouldn't let them go. Some of y'all, God is calling to leave all. When you experience that, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. But hold the clock. Some see time. But there are others who are the sons and daughters of Issachar, the sons of Issachar, they, they know what time it is. And I'm talking to many of them all across the country. Not just you. They know what time it is. Mondre do. Them the weird ones. You always want to send out what you call weird stuff because you want to sit, you want to hear the, the sweet rosy stuff. You wonder why? Why are they always affected by that? Because they have a sense of time, yeah. but because he don't pass the church, he don't get much, he don't get much respect. Aura has a sense of it. Pastor Robinson has it. Now, if I don't call your name, don't mean you don't. Because I ain't the one that just gave it to you. There are others here. But it's the sense of God's time. God ain't just about us coming to church. He's sitting here and marinating until he come. And the problem is a lot of believers ain't got no passion you ain't got no passion about the time. Amen. Got passion about greens and gravy. And you can see I got a little passion too. But we got to have passion about this time. You got to have passion about this time. That time is real. Yeah. <laughs> she come to me the other day. Can I? I'm going to see it. I, I ain't going to get in no trouble, but I'll see it. She come to me the other day. I used to up on my toes. <laughs> About that time. You stepped on my toes. About that time. God want us to be mindful of time. My mama called me from Arkansas yesterday. Baby, she ain't calling me. She's 80, 85 plus years old. About that time. She ain't think about dying. She think about that time. So where are you in reference to God's time? We're in the end times, and the only or the last generation that can see what we're seeing. God did a flip-flop on us, and it's like being on a ride that's turning the curb. The centrifugal force, if y'all know what that means, when you go around a corner real fast, you're going to lean automatically. That's why they got them things up in your car right here. If you're on the passenger side, that's to help you. It ain't just to help you get in and out the car, but to help you when you go around the corner. The centrifugal force. God took us around a corner. He whatever. And, and the body of Christ got to get this. You got to get this. This is, this is the message, brothers and sisters, families, ladies, gentlemen, people all over the world. We are the last generation 
Because some of the things we're seeing and experiencing, it's going to take multiple people who are passionate about the time. I'm going to prove to you. Help me with my slides. Is that, is that on? Come turn it on for me, somebody. Get the remote. Y'all think I'm an angry preacher. I am not angry, man. I'm passionate, man. Yeah. You say, he angry. I ain't angry. You, you, used to, used to, you probably just used to somebody that didn't have no passion about it. Yeah. Now, y'all want to have salvation meetings? And everybody in here say, you want me to preach salvation messages to you? I am preaching a salvation, but it's an eternal salvation message. Yeah. Yeah, I don't need to go over, uh, you know, anybody want to come to Christ? Why? You, all the folk in here saved in this room. But to the people in the world that are watching, it's time for the church to realize that we are no longer in a corner. And the Bible says in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7, Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him. We are in the time now that every eye is hearing about him, seeing him. When we come together now, we're not a little church on the hill, and there's a few of us in here. We cackling and, and coming through, looking backwards. Every eye is beholding. God made it that way. Whether we wanted to do it or not, if we was going to stay in Christian business, and everybody that don't, didn't want to do this had to shut down. You never seen so many pastors grumbling about they had to get cameras and go on Facebook. Because we were all brought up not to be pretentious. And so, soon as we did, folk thought we was trying to be pretentious. All of a sudden, now we got people with four thumbs trying to run cameras. Everybody walking in front of cameras. You don't know all the stuff we've had to go through. Paying for expensive equipment that we wouldn't do for in a thousand years. We thought was a waste. Finding people with the technical know-how to do it. Some of us had to preach and then run adjust the camera and come back and preach. Making our home studio. We're still dealing with that. Turning bedrooms into studios. Painting walls green so we can do green screens. Trying to make it look like we're in a big place. Finding the best room in the house. Get lighting and all that. You know, the dog barking in the back. The cat running across the table. Wife cooking and we trying to keep a focus on and smelling the food. All kinds of doors shutting. Your neighbor's uh, chickens over here making noise. And then when you, when you hear it, you're like, oh my God, I got to go talk to the neighbors. Can you put a muzzle over them chickens? A true story. <laughs> you messing up my broadcast. He don't speak good English. <laughs> no, it's true. Filming in the garage in the wintertime. Lighting. I asked some of these pastors, bishops, apostles, I mean guys that you know. I could call names, all of them, from their studies. Why? Because this scripture is being manifested. Behold, he's coming with clouds and every eye shall see him. So God is having it so that they're still doing ministry. Every eye is going to see him, but every eye, every ear is hearing him. We ain't shut down because people got diseases. We're outside doing ministry, being talked about. And that time they would say, who are them people that shepherd? They ain't wise. Oh, look at them all on top of one another, all on top of one another. Now everybody on top of one another. They ain't saying nothing. But back then, they all on top of one another. See, it don't take all that. You ain't just got to prove you got God. You know, all that kind of stuff. Judging you and judging me. Because you had the nerve to be out on the sidewalk singing and preaching. And there's an epidemic in the land. You were supposed to be dead because you were walking in faith. 
foolish. But how could every eye see him if believers were afraid to stand up for him? Even those who pierced him and all tribes of the earth will wail on earth for him. Even so. Now, we're the only generation that's do that. Why? Because now, the earth being 25,000 miles in circumference, every four seconds, you can shoot a video and it'll go around the world. Until now, no other generation can see that, Brother Mandre. You can put something out there on Facebook and Twitter, whatever, Instagram, and in four seconds, it can go around the world. China, Israel, uh, Russia, four seconds. Every eye could see him. Somebody could shoot. Hey, there is Jesus. He's coming. And boom, all around the world. That's fulfillment. You live in that generation. And they keep coming up with better cameras to make sure you can see it. That's what they're selling the cameras on. Isn't that an oxymoron? The iPhone 10 ain't good enough. Now the Samsung will come out and got four little bubbles on it so you can get an even better view of it. But see, that don't bother us. The clock is ticking. Luke 17, 34 and 36. I tell you that in that night there shall be two men in one bed. One shall be taken and the other shall be left. You preach this and your wife's in church. You preach it hard enough. Make her get up and come talk to you the next day. So are you talking to me? 